you might hear. I, however, hear. Take it away! Now we got that little dilly dally out of the way, please know that I requested an advanced reader copy of Diaz's Trust. I didn't get a response back from the publisher, and I didn't whine about it on social media. I just sucked it up and bought the book myself. Far oh, no all superheroes wear capes, I suppose. Nevertheless, I was a little bit concerned with Trust, because I had read Diaz's In the Distance, which was kindly sent to me by Grace from GK Reads for Christmas and I had read, I had reviewed it and if you are a member of the Booker Boy book club you'll be able to see that review below. I'll link it for ease. In the Distance was okay. I liked what Diaz was doing in reinventing the western but the meandering meadows and the mountainous mountains and the animalous animals. There's a lot of nature right in it. I, I only have a certain amount of time. <laughs> well, I can see why some people think I'm a harsh critic. Nevertheless, Diaz was a finalist for the Pulitzer on his debut, and we have been waiting some years for his next, his continuation, his sophomore, if we get really American here, am I right, peeps? And Diaz within his next novel did indeed go American. What could be more American than the great American West? Well, it's the great American boom of the 20s, and then the great American depression in 1929. If you want a TLDR of what this book is, just look to Mr. Krabs from Spongebob, because this is about many, 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 many. The UK cover, more so than the American cover, I think gives a better representation of what this book is. Is. Although we are dealing with the multi-millionaires, the people who are the most affluent, the ones who have profited from the market rising, and equally the people who have profited from the market crashing, over the course of four people who have four unique voices, over four modes of writing, a novel, a manuscript, a memoir, and the last one, sorry dear reader, you're going to have to read the book and find out. You're just going to have to buy the book because each iteration builds upon the last in order for the reader to deduce what Diaz's story really is. What is the story of the Rasks? Before we talk about who the Rasks are and importantly who the Rasks are, and let's talk about trust. What does that word mean? Now, everyone's going to give a, a vague sort of response to this. However, the title of Diaz's book is almost Franzian in nature, that there are a lot of things in regards to trust that the reader is going to understand the more that you read the book. Purity is not just about the missing girl. Purity, crossroads, is not just the literal meaning of the church gathering in crossroads. Freedom within freedom means many things to many different people. Regarding trust, some of the questions that I asked that I think you would ponder the same is, well, who can I trust in this novel? What does trust look like. Diaz is putting a lot of trust in the reader. Oh, trust fund. Well, that's interesting. That's, that's financial. Can you trust the market? Can you buy trust? And can you keep trust? These are but a few and you will be able to find more at your local bookstore. You'll have to, you have to do, you won't get the questions about well buy it. You have to read it. Don't particularly know why I had to specify that. The first test of trust that the reader is put through is, well, is the first iteration of the Rask's story true? That being the fact that, well, it's a novel called Bond, written by a man called Vanna. So is this a novel? Is this a biography? Is this fiction? And is this non-fiction. Reading the synopsis on the back, we know that there is a mystery towards Benjamin and Helen Rask. So we as the reader go in trying to deduce what is true and what is false. Benjamin Rask is one of, if not the wealthiest man in the 1920s, we are told, who made an, a, an astounding amount of wealth through the economic boom of the 1920s. 
20s and then surmounted that through selling short stocks when, well, the Wall Street crash occurred. If you'd asked me a few years ago what short stock selling was, I wouldn't have had a clue. Basically, it's when you bet against the market. It's when you think it's going to fail. And the reason why I know that is, remember the cultural moment of the 21st century when Redditors went on to Robin Hood and, and just pummeled money into game stock stocks. And everyone who was against the market, so the more that GameStop fell, the more money they would create. They just like collapsed. They just collapsed it all and people with trust funds became broke and everyone was cheering. Ah, oh, remember that? I, I never would have thought I would have used that piece of internet history, that, that piece of culture today. Like, isn't this, isn't this a wonderful thing? Do allow me to digress from discretion. This book is full of terminology, monetary terms, jargon, the financier lingo which functions in the stock market that allows and utilises money to work. So talking about percentage falls, we're also going to talk about the points of the door. All of this is immediately confusing and is also constructed by financiers to be confusing. It's meant to keep the lay person out. It, it's, a, it's a language that you just have to trust. You have to trust that these points and these index maintain an equilibrium. And if it doesn't, then all hell breaks loose. That is, unless you are Benjamin Rask, who somehow is able to supersede all expectations of the market. He doesn't need to trust it. It's almost as if he can dictate and or predict the market. Get. Everyone who was wealthy around him is confused to how he was able to not manipulate it, but just to know that everything was going to falter in 1929. There's a conspiracy around him. Do you trust that conspiracy? Do you believe that Rask could do that? Later on within the novel, there's a conversation of, well, if you trust that there is a conspiracy against him, well, why does no one ask the same questions when he did the exact same thing when the boom happened and made, a, like, unfathomable wealth. Why does trust falter when others falter with it? To Rask, who cares? He's got money guns ablazing. He could do whatever he wants. And the Great Depression doesn't even seem to touch him. Money's only going to go a certain way. Money can buy the best doctors. Money can buy the best medicine. But it doesn't buy health. Rask's wife, Helen, ultimately succumbs to ill health. Now, we learn that Helen does come from an an interesting family nevertheless, but she is bubbly, she is charismatic, she is a socialite to the nth degree, but none of that is going to save her from the ailments. Now, I, there's a scene here, and Diaz pulls her off, hits the bullseye on this. Helen sequesters herself away for a few days, and she has severe eczema without telling you what happens if you know someone who has eczema and begins to scratch it imagine that over a few days seeing helen uh tank like just tank within a few pages is it's stark it's a stark contrast and this dark shadow of Helen's health pushes the rest of the novel bonds forward. Diaz is right, it just pushes this narrative that she's getting worse and there's, there's nothing that's going to help. That ultimately wouldn't do anything to me, apart from in a latter part. Oh, he pulls some cootsie stuff here yeah, uh, that he references that, well, why does the novel like push this narrative? Like, surely something's going on between this character and why Vanna went right to the novel wanted to push this moment. Diaz is in the head of the reader throughout constructing this and every time you go, oh that feels like a 
bit coincidental, don't you think? The next iteration dissects that scene for you and everything that you question about Helen Rusk is ultimately revealed towards the end of this novel. The question really isn't about why did Benjamin get his well. The Diaz takes the great Gatsby cliche, the, the Donald Trump success story. We know that men made a lot of money, but where are the women throughout this story? What what were they doing? Did they play literally no part? Were they were they just there looking nice? Were they just glamorous? Or ultimately were they masterminding the entire thing all along? A Diaz takes similar to what he did in In the Distance, takes the convention and just subverts it in a way that is immaculately plotted. Every iteration builds perfectly and just the right amount. Diaz has crafted this with you in mind. Let me give you an example. Within the next iteration, we don't really see that there's any correlation to begin with. Only in the third iteration are all the gaps filled and even the third iteration explains why this, this the second iteration even exists in the first part where we have the memoir of the real version of the Rasks. I'm trying not to explain too much here but just go with me on this. Ida is asked to write someone's memoir and she's interviewed. She's not really interviewed. She's, she's ultimately just told I would say but she has to trust everything that comes forth from this person's mouth. Only do we then realise there's a bit of a subplot where someone is misusing Ida's trust in order to make a quick buck from themselves and that the person that she is doing the memoir of is ultimately using her own story in order to elaborate on his own. Everyone and everything you learn about in trust, and I say this with absolute sincerity, I, 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 I'm not being ironic here, you cannot trust. How do people want to be received, perceived, represented and understood and all those factors obscures this trust. It's down to you to figure out that th this blew me out of the water. It, it's absolutely this this naughty little book caught me unsurprised and it's just this is just a dream. If all novels could be written like this, I'd sleep easy at night. I'd sleep easy in my bed, bit of money. <laughs> oh, I'm actually broke. <laughs>